All right, so in this uh, video, we're gonna be talking about the properties of exponential functions. So there's actually two main properties we're gonna be talking about, and really one of them sort of justifies the other, and then that one's the one we're really gonna be using a lot. So the two pieces that we care about, or the two properties we care about, the first of them, and this is back from the library of functions, we mentioned it, so this is that uh, exponential functions are monotonic. So if you remember that word, monotonic, this means that they are um, always going in the same direction in the y sense. Uh, so they're always either going up or they're always uh, going down. And in fact, sort of more importantly for us, uh, exponential functions are this is not usually put in in pre-calc, but I'm gonna just stress this here. They are strictly monotonic, meaning that they're not even flat. Um, there are no two places that equal each other. So if we remember, draw a quick example over here. So remember something like, uh, let's say f of x is e to the x, right? So this thing stayed really close to the graph to the axis at the bottom, and that sort of takes off, right? But even though it looks really close to flat on this left side, it's not. It's still getting smaller, strictly. So if I'm going from the left to the right, then that's telling me that I'm actually always increasing in this case, right? If I put a negative in front of the function, that would flip it, and then I'd be always decreasing. Um, but the point is, is that it's never flat. Now this is actually really important because it makes us, or gives us the second property. And this is another one that we mentioned in the library of functions, but this is the one that we're really going to exploit a lot, uh, both now and when we talk about logs, which is that this function is, so exponential functions, are one to one, which if you remember, this should be a, the most Pavlovian reflex, you see that, and you should immediately think what? You should immediately think one-to-one, -one, bam, invertible, i.e., that is, uh, they are invertible. Now, the invertibility, the invertible part of it here, we're gonna get into that in some Quite, in, quite into a lot of detail, really, when we talk about x, uh, when we talk about logarithmic functions, because that's really their whole thing, the whole thing about logarithmic functions. But the one-to-one -one part allows us to sort of solve exponential functions in a way that doesn't technically use logs, um, which can be useful at times. So, in particular, they allow us to sort of justify. Um, situations where if we have a base to a power and that same base to another power that are equal, we can then set the powers equal, which once we get to the point of logs, we will say, we'll sort of discover that that's really just because we're using logs without using logs. Um, so this is sort of a bridge to that gap right now. So in fact, let me again switch colors here. So let's look at an example of this. So, uh, so let's look at an example. So let's say we have something like uh, 3 to the 3x plus 1 equals 3 to the 2x minus 7, okay? So if we want to know what x is, the one-to-one -one thing, this thing right here, right, the fact that it's one-to-one, -one, this lets us say that if I have the same base to some different powers, the only way this is possible, the only way that this thing could equal this thing, right, is if the power and the power are the same. So this tells me, since this is a three and that is a three, their powers have to be equal. So this tells me that three x plus one equals two x minus seven. But now I have just, right, some lines, I can, I can solve this, right, minus two uh, x minus one, so subtract 2x and subtract 1 from both sides. So I'm going to get x on this side, right? 3x minus 2x is x. That's 0. That's 0. This is going to be minus 8. And that's 
my answer. And if we're not sure, we can actually check this, right? So this is going to give me 3 to the minus 23, and this is going to be 3 to the minus 16, minus 7, so that's also minus 23. Um, although I will point out that unlike the case where we had to check with, a, with uh, extraneous functions, with the radicals, we don't have to check here because we didn't actually apply a power. We just used the one-to-one -one property to know that the powers were equal, OK? So this is sort of the advantage of knowing that this is the case, uh, that these powers are going to actually um, be equal as opposed to trying to raise powers where you might get extraneous solutions. Now, all on its own, that's maybe not terribly thrilling. I would not blame you for being kind of unimpressed with that. The more useful portion of this is when we're given things there, the bases don't actually look the same, but we can sort of hack them enough to get them to be the same. So let's say, for example, let's do another example. And let's do an example, let's say uh, 8 to the uh, 2x minus 1 equals, and let's say, 1 fourth to the 3x, uh, not 3x, sorry, it's not what I meant to write. Let me grab a cloth here to clean that. Sorry, I wanted 3 minus x. There we go. OK, now at first glance, 8 and 1 fourth do not seem to be the same number. And indeed, they are not. <laughs> but I can write them both as the same number to different powers. And this is really where the sort of clever observation comes in. So in particular, 8 I can write as 2 cubed, right? 2 to the third power is 8. And 1 fourth, that's 1 over 2 squared, meaning I can write that as 2 to the minus 2. And I still have 3, to the minus, uh, three minus x is power. But now I can do my right, uh, properties of exponents. So I have a power to a power, power to a power. So I can multiply them to get them to be in the same power. So I'm going to get 2 to the 6x minus 3. So that's multiplying 3 to both. And over here, I'm going to get 2 to the minus 2. That's going to be a minus 6. And minus 2 times minus x is going to be 2x. OK. And now I can see that I have the same base to different powers. So I can write these powers as being equal. right? So I can say the power over here, 6x minus 3, equals the power over here, 2x minus 6. Right? And so again, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and add 3 to both sides. So on this side, I'm going to have 4x. That's 0. On this side, that's 0. I'm going to have minus 3. Divide both sides by 4. I'm going to have x equals negative 3 fourths. Okay. So even though it didn't look like they had the same base, here I can rewrite them as the same base and use that to get to my answer. Okay. Even when we have logs, we can see, we'll find out that we can do things with change of base. And really, any base you use is fine, because you can use uh, some log rules to still isolate x. But even though you technically you can use any base, having this sort of idea in the background makes it so you get much more elegant math to actually solve what you're trying to do. So you actually get nice numbers instead of having weird like log base 4 of e thrown in somewhere. Um, so it's sort of nice to make these observations, even if you're going to use logs in the future, because that's going to make it so that you get a much cleaner answer. Okay. All right. I also am just going to mention that exponential functions are still functions, right? So all the stuff we know about functions also applies here, like our manipulations, right? Add a negative in front, it goes down. We could put negatives like in or put numbers in with the x to move things left, right, flip, et cetera. So remember, everything we learned about functions in the universal section also applies. This is just the exponential specific stuff. Okay. All right. And that is it.